Loft beds can be quite expensive, even the low quality ones. So I built my own double loft bed in a small room in my apartment with nothing but hand tools and very simple techniques. It fits a double mattress and has a built-in desk with LED lighting. I also did this on a budget. I did however make some mistakes along the way, but I think it turned out pretty cool. The goal was simple. I wanted to build a loft bed. It needs to be cheap, strong, simple to assemble. It needs to look cool, fit a double mattress and have a desk underneath. This is the small room I was building it in. It has a wardrobe in the corner that can't be blocked off. The room is only 2 meters by 2.6 meters, so it's not very big. Before starting my design, I needed to know what materials I had available. I took a trip to Bunnings to see what timber was in stock. Selecting the right material was quite important here. I chose to use 90x35mm framing timber as it was much cheaper than the 90x45 and still offered great strength. I also needed to account for the offcuts. I need to be efficient in my design so offcuts don't go to waste and they can be used elsewhere in the build. I jumped into Fusion 360 to create some rough CAD models of different design ideas. This was a pretty iterative process, trying to reduce the waste, keep things strong and still make it look good. Eventually I landed on a design that used 90x35mm timber, a few 90 degree brackets and two joist hangers. Once I was happy with that, I then made the trip to Bunnings and got my materials. Two 90x35mm joist hangers, MA carriage bolts with nuts and washers, a bunch of 90 degree brackets, and I ordered my timber which was delivered to the door. This was the first mistake I made. I thought I had ordered some OSB or plywood, but it was melamine. I will explain how this is a mistake later on. Before cutting anything, I checked every single board. I'm looking for warping, I'm checking the end grain, and keeping an eye out for big knots or damage. Once that's done, I sorted everything into three piles. A is the best timber going to be used for structural parts, and C, which is the worst quality, which will be used for non-critical and hidden pieces. I then marked each board in the piles A, B, or C, so I know exactly where it's going to be used later. Here's my cutting list. It shows all the timber lengths I need, where each piece goes in the bed, and whether it's a grade A, B, or C. The A grade boards are reserved for the leg posts and rim joists, as they are structurally important. I then marked the lengths on each board in pencil, and use a square to draw the lines where I'm going to be cutting the wood. Okay, so based on this cutting list, I have all the timber here organized. So these are to be cut the same length, these are to be cut the same length, these four are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are two single length cuts. Two bottoms are square. Squeeze them up, clamp them down here. So my cut's going to be up here on this line and on the other side I have it raised up this edge so I can get a cut on here and on this, this face. Not terrible. At least they're consistent. This time I'm going to try clamping two pieces of wood with the kerf of the blade on the line I need to cut. This will hopefully keep my blade from straying. So let's see how that goes. I end up cutting the rest of the timber on my balcony. Okay, so this is one of them. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so here I have the four inside posts and then these are the four outside ones, but there are slightly different lengths. So Let's start putting them together. The leg posts are made by butting together two 90 by 35 mm timber boards at 90 degrees. They're held along the inside length with metal brackets and wood screws. Then, long screws join the boards at the butt joint going into the edge grain of one plank for extra strength. So these will be metal brackets that are just going to be holding together on the inside before I drill into the end. I used a piece of tape to mark the depth of the drill bit so I didn't burst out the other side. I then drilled pilot holes for all the screws. I used a square bit dry for all the screws in this build, as the heads don't strip as easily. Screw from here into the end grain just to squeeze them tight. Drill a pilot hole down here. And to keep that from straying you know, in any sort of direction. I just screw two pieces here, so when I'm drilling, I'm just gonna press the, the drill bit into that corner, just so I can get square going down. So that's gone in perfectly flush. 
hasn't pulled through, hasn't cracked the wood, hasn't hit any of those screws. And let's just see now if there's any gap after releasing clamping pressure. No. But it's the same thing for the other four legs, which is just a lot of drilling and screwing. So I have the inside leg now where I'm putting the rim joist across and to join it to this I need to put two MA bolts through here and one will take this bracket plate as well to connect this other rim joist here just so I don't have to screw it into the end grain they're not fully tightened or anything yet and then this bracket you'll have the other rim joist joining up here so at least the weight will be supported by this post and it will be secured the corner should look like that which is it's tidy enough okay so I have the other side done now that's the other rim joist so this will be the back of the bed and then this is the brace which will be up about desk height so about 750 mil or so same on this side here Here I made sure the bracing was perfectly level. So for this bracing I've drilled three small pilot holes to drill to screw these together but because there's a slight gap just because how warped some of the wood can be I'm going to drill the pilot hole with a hole that kind of is slightly smaller than the actual screw itself. I'm getting a bigger screw and I'm going to drill just the length of this board. That will allow threads to spin inside here and that will squeeze these boards together. As you see there, it pulled the wood in and it didn't jam them apart. Temporarily put the four legs inside the room. We only have the one bracing that's actually screwed to the rest. The rest of the wood is just going to rest in there. Okay, so I put on the supporting brace here. So I've kind of staggered them a small bit. And they're here kind of like a cross pattern. So I'm just going to line them up. step is putting up our joist in the middle here and I'm going to be using these joist hangers to hang that 90 by 35 mil on either side. You can see that there's little hooks here. So what you can do is you can line up your joist hanger. So now it should be about here. Get yourself a hammer. So I'm going to start marking all the holes here. Okay, so I have a lot of the fasteners in, so I went over around, tightened all the carriage bolts, put a few screws into the rim joist. Still need to put in one or two more screws, but it's on there solid. Next kind of step is put the bracing on these corners because, as you can kind of see here, there's a bit of a wiggle that way. In this direction, it's not too bad. Bracing here and here, because we kind of need the access here, I won't be carrying this one across. So these are all the offcuts we have from cutting all 16 pieces. So now we need to best utilize these for ladder rungs, bracing, guardrails, and some other little pieces. So with these offcuts, I have two that are just about 530 mil long. So I'm kind of going to go off the drawing just so I can use offcuts that I haven't cut. And put that as a 45 here and here. Originally, my drawing had two 500 mils for each corner here and two 500 mils for here, but this side is much sturdier than I expected, so I might just throw the smaller 400 and something mils into these corners here. Okay, so I've marked my holes, three holes on three corners of a square. I marked out this, and I'm just going to flip the board so I don't have to sand off all of this. I'm just going to transfer over my the pilot holes, drill these ones bigger than the actual screw so it pulls the wood together. So we've got our two corner braces on and much sturdier now. Okay, so I have the other braces added now and 
a bit more offcuts I might put some big bracing here and here okay so now I'm gonna put up the ladder post so I've measured it's 700 mil from here to here and about 700 mil there to there so for the ladder post here I'm going to use 4 m8 in just a square pattern okay so the four holes marked out here here and here I'm gonna put a piece of sacrificial wood where it'll stop the wood from kind of chipping and breaking off okay not too bad okay so I finished off drilling the holes for the ladder rungs here okay so I have the two braces up this pilot hole was smaller than this one so that meant that I pull them together because the screw can spin in this board like I mentioned before quite a sturdy frame now the next step here is putting the guard rail up here so I'm just gonna put one block in the middle bolt on with four carriage bolts in the middle and then put two boards behind it so it looks like it's one flush board okay so I have this clamped in place I need to cut two of these to 665mm alright so I have all the wood that I need to get cut Now there's a small detail I tried to do was keep all these Z's in 4.6 kind of horizontal. Okay, so I've run into a small dilemma. I need to screw two 35mm boards together. Now all I've got left is some 35 or 30mm screws. What I'm going to have to do here is maybe on the inside board. So if this is the post, I might just drill a bigger hole until it gets somewhere there. Just so I can bite into this board and this board doesn't actually need to be that strong, it just needs to be in place. Okay, so to decide how high I'm going to put the guardrail, I'm going to be using this to actually climb up. Like, I'm going to be putting a hand here, and probably a hand here. So I'm just going to climb up, so I need to make sure the board has enough room for my fingers above it. I have 50mm kind of clearance here. So what I do is I got one of these drill bits here, so it's a 12mm, and I drilled in up until the point of the tape. Just so we're not all the way to the other side. That's firmly in place now on, on all sides there. Okay, so we have almost everything together except for the slats. And this is all the wood we have left over at the end of it, which I might use some of them for table legs because I think it'd be nice to put a table across here. Is just start sanding everything. Right, so I need to cut these sheets of melamine. I originally had thought I'd order some like plywood but this is basically just chipboard so we'll see how it feels like structurally because the way it's going to be distributed over like a lot of slats but if you just sit on one of them I don't want it to, to break so okay so I have all the slats put in place I just need to measure them up and then screw them into the joists okay so I've cut the two offcoats to 118 mil which is the gap of the slats so I'm just going to Put them down and then screw the slats in. Okay, so I've put in one 75mm screw down the center, put one down here, and that seems very sturdy. So I have that one here, put that one there. Okay, so I'm actually kind of sanding most of the corners that have like pencil marks and stuff like that. So now I'm just going to get a damp claw and just go around and try to get all the dust off. Okay, so even though the bed is mainly done. I think I kind of had a bit of a oversight. I kind of want to add a piece of wood here. It's not going to look amazing, but I'm just going to rest on that, bolt it in here and here so it's quite strong, put in some screws and just match it so it's the same height as that, just so you have two things to grab. So to make clearance for those two bolts, what I did is I put some pencil on it. I'm going to hold it up and I just gave it a bit of a whack and I can transfer those two holes there, so I'm just going to drill them out. So I've cleared out just two of them holes using those forcer bits and now when I put it in place, it's flush. Okay, so I finally installed this other rail post. So it's, it's quite sturdy. Two bolts, drilled the wrong hole. So I'm going to add an LED strip along the inside of the bed frame. So I have an LED strip here. And what I have is, I think it's a 10mm plasterboard kind of little trim. Literally just simple USB LED strip. I'm going to run it up behind and I'm going to actually drill out this hole so I can put the LED strip through it. Okay, so I've added in the LED strip now, so it's running up the back of this post. It's coming through and it's running inside that little plastic thing, so 
I think it looks pretty cool. So here we have just a double mattress from Ikea. And there we have the mattress up top of it. It still needs like two or three days to actually fully inflate. So here we have the finished product. And finally here's a breakdown of the total cost for this loft bed. Overall it costs a grand total of 540 Australian dollars, which is about half the price of the basic IKEA model, and that doesn't even have half the features. The timber was the most expensive item, at about $250 for both the framing and the melamine. This is still expensive in comparison to a cheap double bed frame and mattress you could buy online, but the loft bed adds so much space to the room and it doubles as a study or an office with a desk underneath.